Hi, welcome. This is uh, the Ask Scott C Show, and really delighted today. I've got Paul Pritchard with me today from Abacus Accountancy. Hello. So Hi. welcome, Paul. Thank you Hi. for coming. No problem. Thank you for having me. And Paul was a late jump in after I got let down, but I won't tell you who it is by just in case they come on in the future <laughs> and I don't want to upset them. Um, we've got some great questions today, actually. So it's going to be about 40 minutes, hopefully long. Paul's going to help answer the questions. Um, Paul, we're based in Braintree. That's right. Yeah, I'm down at uh, Lakes Innovation Centre. So uh, if anyone knows where the sorting office is in Braintree, halfway between Freeport and the town centre, uh, we just tucked away around the back there. Yeah. And um, and just a quick shout out, we've got obviously Titans, thank you for sponsoring the show as they do, so that's their shout out done. So Paul, tell us exactly what you do. And All right, okay, uh, we're an accountancy firm of a difference, so um, we obviously do your usual compliance, um, you know, we do your accounts, your tax return, things like that. We also have a cloud-based system, which allows us to be a lot more proactive in helping you in your business. So all your transactions get streamed daily from your bank account. Uh, we basically can monitor your business during the year. That means instead of just doing your accounts at the end of the year and telling you how big your tax bill is going to be, we're on the phone to you before your year ends, telling you you're doing really, really well. Let's make sure you do X, Y, and Z and don't give it all to the tax man. It also helps us to spot problems before they arise. Um, so basically, we can just be a lot more proactive with your accountants. It also, it means you'll do your bookkeeping and accounts in about 20% of the time you currently do. So you're going to save time, you're going to save money, you're going to save stress. So we're different to most other firms of accountants. And if you want to find out a little bit more about it, have a chat with me. Uh, we can offer you a free one-month trial so you can see how it, what it's all about. Yeah, and what we're doing near the end, we'll, put <coughs> your, we'll magically put your, your oh, website. Love a bit of magic, box, Scott. Yeah. Box, so uh, if all goes well. Okay. Um, that's great. And I think, and, and I know you're very well thought of around here. Um, how long have you advocacy accounts you've been running? Uh, I've been going for about 11 years. 11 so, years? Yeah. And you started it? And yeah, so I started the company very, very small, just yeah. working from an office at home. So my wife and I are directors. Uh, we've got two children. While the kids were young, it was great just working from an office at home. Yeah. And then about two years ago, we moved into offices, started taking on staff, and the business has tripled in the last 18 months or two years. Yeah. So two years ago is when you moved into... Yeah, just over two years ago, we moved okay. into our first office. Yeah. Cool. So, what was the decision <coughs> behind that? Because obviously that was a big part of growing your business. Mm. And I think a lot of people that work from home, it's great. Like myself, got the offices here. Um, yeah. But it is noticeable that when you take that leap, a lot of businesses do yeah. know it. And, yeah, and that's I think right. So, so what, was, what was the thinking of sort of kind of the, why did you feel you had to go into them offices? Okay, a um, couple of reasons really. Um, while the children were young, it suited me to have the business much smaller. So I essentially was yeah. abacus. Um, everyone dealt with me, um, but I could fit it around, you know, you, you've got children, you know, it's like yeah. you've got a school play, something like that. You can just drop everything and go and do school runs, that sort of thing. Uh, but then sometimes you, you get to a point you find you gets to lunchtime, you're still not even dressed. Cause you're <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the downside of having a, a home office. Yeah. Um, as the children got older and are more independent, so they're now yeah. both at secondary school, it's just a way of basically something to get my teeth into. I've always enjoyed business and enjoyed growing it. Yeah. Um, and I would like to have a business that the children could follow me into. And also, yeah. from an exit strategy point of view, I've got options. Yeah. So as the business grows, I've then got value in the business. Yeah. So I can either choose to sell it on or I can choose to have other people running it and I step away from the business and it will work without me. As I say, when my children leave education, if they want to come into the family business, there is now a business for them to come into. So it's all those things really played a part in it. Okay. And that's awesome. And so when, well obviously when you moved into the offices, you realise probably quite quickly, as we all do, doing new marketing efforts have got to increase yeah, a little absolutely. bit. Hello. Yeah. I'm going to go back to a real marketing show. Okay. Um, so what was your, uh, what, if you say like your first six months, so not yeah. now, but your first six months, because you're probably smarter with your marketing now than when you were. Probably yeah, absolutely. It, yeah, yeah. So your first six months of going to the office, what changed in terms of your marketing compared to when you was at home? Okay. Um, to be fair, when I first started the business, it was all done back in the old days where you, you just put an advert in Yellow Pages or Thompson, oh, good forgot office. about it, and that was it. And the yeah. phone just rang, you answered it, and you got some work out of yeah. it. And how many, how many clients you got would depend on how big you could afford. Yeah, exactly, how big the advert was. And of course, yeah. I chose Abacus, so it, chose, it came right at the beginning of the listings because AB and yeah, all those sort of things. Now that's totally irrelevant yeah. as far as I'm concerned with marketing. So all the time that I was at home, didn't really do any marketing, to be honest. Had a website, but it was more there as a presence. Yeah. Um, I think the main thing for marketing with me was first of all getting a marketing, um, some marketing help, so actually having yep. somebody working in the office a couple of days a week, uh, doing social media, making sure the website constantly had con um, current content, 
yeah. through writing blogs, making sure that we link to them from social media posts, and actually getting out there as well. Mm. Uh, because then I had the time to actually go out networking, meeting people, yeah. and gradually you start to get known in the business mm. community. And we met that way, didn't we? We did indeed, <laughs> yeah. And that's how your business... But that, for yeah. me, that's what worked the best, I would say. Yeah, that's cool. That's great tip. So... <coughs> and also, I think to help people with their sort of the business growth side and all that. So, mm -hmm. you've got, cause you've got staff now. How many staff have you got now? I've got five. Five, okay. Yeah. Oh, well done. <laughs> um, so, you've got staff. So, I think, uh, and it's my good question because a lot of people get this wrong where they go, I've got to get staff because I'm mm. not working from home now. Yeah. Which one did you do? Did you get the staff or did you, as the business grew, you took on staff as you needed it? Yeah. Which one did you take it? Was, it was a little bit of both. So, yeah. I was quite lucky in it. I took on part time staff. So okay. I didn't suddenly have an overhead of a full-time person. Yeah. So we started well, started with the marketing, so took on a part-time marketing person. Yeah. That's the business built up, to, took on a part-time accountancy person. Right. Then that another accountancy person, then that person went full-time, and that's it's gradually yeah. evolved. We now no longer have an in-house marketing person because yeah. we don't really need to now. It's yeah. sort of just got the, the momentum is going now. So. Yeah. I think that's smart about it, and a lot of those you watching this about you're growing your businesses. Don't think you've got to go and get staff or something because you'd rather be overstaffed than have a. And that's exactly. when you have a, a real sort of problem, if you like, responsibility because they've obviously got to pay them. Yeah. Um, that's the biggest thing you put your business see. at risk straight yeah. away. And I think the, that's definitely a smarter way of doing it, the way you've explained it. So, um, it cool. is always a risky state, unless you have lots and lots of funding there to sit and pay full time people to come on board. If you're trying to grow it organically, you've got to be very careful taking on staff. Yeah. It's, it that's can good. be easily be your biggest overhead. Yeah. I think mean, that's where a lot of business I see, they get in trouble with stuff. Mm. And then they feel they obviously got to pay the staff before they pay themselves. That's right, or, exactly. You know, yeah, yeah, so yeah. they end up, their staff who actually don't see the, the stress and they end up working for nothing. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, and then they're trying to do too much themselves. Exactly. Cool. Right, uh, we've got, so we've got some questions in. Okay. But nothing else. Well, I think when we finish up now, I want to talk to you about the, the charity you did, and I was at one of your oh, charity okay. events recently. Yeah. So I want to yeah. kind of get that out of there because that's a great cause. And, uh, <coughs> and you're getting on a bike again, aren't you, for that? Yeah, true. Yeah, so I will be. <laughs> So we're going to go through this. We've got some. We've got four great questions actually this week. And um, the third first one. So Jermaine asked, there was a lot of competition locally. How do I differentiate myself from others? As you, mm. you touched this a little bit. Yeah. Because you've probably got this, haven't you, as well? You're yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because we're certainly not no. the only accountants in the no. area. There are lots. So, um, so let me put that to you then. So how did you differentiate yourself? Um, with us, it, it came down to, well, I haven't always been an accountant, as I told you before. So yeah. I came from a non-accountancy background. So I knew what I expected from a firm of accountants. So I had a little bit of a clue when yeah. I wanted straight away. I wanted an accountant who speaks normal everyday English, yeah. who's not going to talk in accountancy language about <laughs> liabilities and assets and stuff that I didn't understand. I didn't want to be made to feel silly, because um, yeah. that was how I felt when I went into a firm of accountants. Mm -hmm. They were nice, but I felt like a, I felt quite small. Yeah. So I thought, I don't want clients to feel like that. Um, I knew that I wanted an efficient service done promptly, it goes without saying that you want your accounts to be accurate, but then that doesn't differentiate us from anybody no. else. So our unique selling point is the fact that we've embraced the cloud and the technology that we use, yeah. which means that rather than just being your end of year accountants and you only have contact with them once a year, we're having contact with clients all through the year. Yeah. And that dialogue, being able to save people money like that, that, yeah, that in itself sure. sets us apart. We've yeah. got a special reporting system that we use, which is very graphical and visual. So exactly. if you're not a numbers person, it's basically a traffic light system. You still understand it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you look at it, if it's red, you know you've got a problem. If it's amber, it might be okay. <laughs> if it's green, you're doing well, keep going. Yeah. And it's so so simple that people look at that month on month and go, oh, okay, my business is doing quite well. Okay. And then they see yeah. a little red area and we go, okay, what can we do to try and make that amber? And then in a couple yeah. of months green. And because it's very visual, people love that. Yeah. So from, from our point of view, it's quite easy to differentiate. From Jermaine's question... Well, I think that's the clue, actually, Jermaine, because... It's about putting yourself in your client's shoes. Yeah. And I think they're saying that um, that I do a lot with my clients. We sort of lead with the client vision. Mm. So you have your, obviously your business commercial vision, and you have your own personal goal, yeah. which a lot of people confuse with that's my why, mm -hmm. and they put it out there. And actually, your why is irrelevant to what everyone else thinks because yeah. you know if your why was to be the biggest accounting firm in the UK, well, I don't care about that. <laughs> you know, no, that's so true. Yeah. Cares about yeah. that. Yeah. But what you've done is absolutely put yourself in the client's shoes. And I think to me, that's whatever your industry is. He hasn't, mm. I don't know his industry actually, but whatever it is, just put yourself in your client's shoes. Yeah. And what would you expect from them? And I think that's a real, real key one actually. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think there's a bang on there for sort of. One of the things we notice with a lot of our clients, are that some people set out to be the cheapest. Yeah. We tend to find that's not a good way of doing it. 
because there'll always be someone who comes along with cheaper overheads and they undercut you and you get the wrong type of clients. Yeah. So whatever it is you're going to use to differentiate yourself, don't do it just on price. Try and yeah. do it on a, you know, some aspect of your service or something that you can do better than everybody yeah. else. And I think if you, absolutely, I think also if you, if you ask yourself the question that if there was, if there was you, Jermaine, sitting here and someone else and someone sitting in front of you said, well, why should I hire you? You know, if you can't answer that question, <laughs> you might have a yeah. problem, Jermaine, all right? Yeah. So whatever you answer that question and really think about that and think, well, it's actually, you know, it might be, you know, and just saying, oh, we care about our clients. Well, everyone cares about their clients. Mm. That doesn't matter. It, they say just the cheapest, you know. But then, you know, some people said, oh, well, their their whole thing is we're, we're the more expensive, you know, we're yeah. freshly expensive. Right, so yeah. it might be, you know, there's a proper, there's a client for you. Yeah. Because it's like we're supermarkets, you know, the same person that shops in pounds, it's not the pound there, it's not the same person that shops in Waitrose. No, that's right. And Waitrose yeah. don't go after that client. Yeah. So they're, they're doing all right. Mm. You look at Tesco's and Sainsbury's and Asda, and they're all trying to chase all their funds. Yeah. And that's where they're finding themselves in a bit more difficulty. So, so answer that self that question, Jermaine, about what, you know, someone was asking, why should they hire you and not the person next to you? And then once you get that answer and put yourself from the client's point of view, I would say that's what you market as your differentiation point. And yeah. It would set you apart. So I'm always happy because, if, I mean, a lot of people confuse me with business coach. I have to keep telling them I'm not a coach. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a marketing strategist. And, yeah. you know, and, and, but, Regardless, if I was in the room for the 10 other marketing strategies, mm. I'd, I'd feel comfortable. And yeah. I know you would be if it was 10 other accountants, yeah. because yeah. we know what it is that is right. that unique, and it is that knowing what yeah. your customer wants and then and then market the hell out of that. Is so probably you'd agree yeah. one of the best worst things is, is to work out what segment you're going after. Which yeah. part of the market are you going after the high end, middle end? Yeah. Once you know what your market is that you're aiming for, then you can start to work out a proposition that's yeah. going to appeal to And there's a real positioning to it. And I was mean, watching, if you watch at some point, but uh, Mark Constable, you know Mark Constable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mark Constable, was, um, who's a work <coughs> for Sherlock's, it's a coach for Sherlock's, does a uh, positioning tool, which mm-hmm. is really key about actually, you know, if you think it's what how expensive and how quality your product is, mm. if you're marketing it to people, yeah, that's you right. Know, yeah. The power shop, it, you're just going to be a misalignment. Yeah. And, uh, just getting back to what you said with the supermarkets, isn't it? Like yeah, Waitrose will exactly. have a different branding to Poundland. Yeah. Everything is consistent with that. Yeah. Cool. So, we've got two questions from Jules actually again. So, we're going we're gonna, to um, we're gonna answer them and then we'll come back to another one from Gillian Arthur, which is quite an interesting one. We'll save that one to the end. Yeah, okay. I like that one. So, Jules, and, and I know Jules, so hi, Jules. And, um, um, it's just probably because I put a post on about um, make sure you have a plan for the week because oh, it's a motivation yeah. on Monday. Yeah. You know, when you wake up Monday, rather than just going, right, what do I do? And trying to do the same thing or mm. think, well, I'll go to this event, I'll go to that networking event, and see, hopefully I'll get a client. Mm. Is rather than actually, just the start of the week, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I've got to do to feel, fulfill my current clients. Been marketing, this is what I'm going to go out and do this week. Yeah. And actually have a plan, you know. Mm-hmm. And, um, and also have a plan that will show you where you're sending them or what, what bit of content you're giving them yeah. to make the value. So, um, so Jules asks this, and it's quite a long one, so how long do I go about planning, Scott? What would you advise as a step to great planning? And do you change the process depending on the outcome? Do you use a template, specific questions, brainstorming techniques, etc.? The eight questions in one day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So basically, what I would like to get is to get inside your head and Paul, oh dear, you don't want to be in there. <laughs> <laughs> to understand how someone who knows how to get clients does it. Oh, and then once you have the plan, how do you ensure you take action to keep to it? There are some great questions there. That is a good one, yeah. isn't it? So okay. this this break this up a little bit then. So I think first of all, the, the first part about how do I go about planning mm-hmm. is is actually in relation with the depending on the outcome. Okay. It, it depends what outcome that I want to achieve. Sure. This week, this month, and I think when I, when I plan stuff, I plan it in in different stages. Mm-hmm. So what I do, George, is I go, I start with a, a quarterly plan. Yeah. And I'm still kind of old school corporate like that, where the quarterly plans. But rather than just doing a quarterly plan, sitting at your desk and forgetting yeah. about it to the next quarter, I then break it up so then a monthly one, mm-hmm. and then uh, to the point where because life happens, then weekly I review it. So mm. I tend to spend an hour on a Sunday night. Just mapping out the next week ahead. That's good. Um, yeah. So I'll, I'll already have the I'll already have um, you know sort of like appointments set in and something like mm. that. But I'll know that where I'm going 
Thursday that week where I'm going Friday. So I haven't got to think, oh, what am I doing tomorrow? What am I doing? And so, it, and by mapping out, I've just been literally an hour Sunday night yeah. and just going through exactly what to do. And then anything that's, that I know that's got to be done. So there's, um, I don't know if you know, we've got a Motivate and Inspire event in September. Okay, yeah. And um, so, so there's some things that have to be done that administration wise with the mm. event um, organizers and stuff and the and the lovely carriage that's sorting out and organizing a lot of the event. So so that's come up from last week. So that wasn't in the quarterly plan. Okay. But what I've done is I've put that into my diary. Yeah. So I've got Pacific time in my diary where and here and funny enough today it was two forty five to two fifty five. I see. That there's a couple of emails I wanted to do. Because yeah. I know I had a bit of time after um Christian Tabitha went and then before you was coming here. Yeah. So I actually put into my diary then oh, when I'm doing that email. That's good. Yeah. So I've got my diary later on as well when I'm going to make a call to someone. Mm -hmm. So I'll plan it like that really yeah. quite intrinsically. Okay. But so I don't have to think about all day long I've got to get that email to Caris, I've got to get that email to Caris. Mm. Because I know I've got my diary set out yeah. and, and I've planned it in. So That's really good. However minute, whether it's doing an email, whether it's doing a... And, and Jules and I are about doing my life plan, about being specific, about doing emails when and replying to them. You don't. I I think you know really. When people say, "Oh, I've got these emails, and I have to do, I have to do these emails, and I've got sidetracked because I had to answer that email, to answer, mm. answer our phone." When you really think about it, how much of that is urgent, it really isn't. <laughs> True. Yeah, um, you're right. Yeah. And actually, you know, is Carol's going to wonder if I got back to a five past nine mm. or two forty-five? It's not going to really make any odds. No. In as long as I get it to her today, really. Yeah. Um. So, so I chose the, the perfect time for me when that's settled into my planning. Okay. So that would be the one about how I go about planning. Yep. Um, so using a diary, but to the hour. Okay. Thing to it. Yourself is. Um, yeah. Again, we with planning, we tend to start at the goal and work backwards. So yeah. um, it can be as far ahead as three years. So we've got like a three-year growth plan. Yeah. Um, it's what they call an orbit diagram. So we know we yeah. want to be the yeah, like if you imagine three yeah. circles. Yeah. The outer circle is your yeah. targets in year three, year two, year one coming in. So at any one point, we know what we're aiming for by the end of that financial year. Right. Okay. Um, and it, obviously, we have a whole line for marketing yeah. as well. Um, so with that, once we know what we need to get to by the end of the financial year, yeah. we can then break it into 12 monthly chunks and say, right, well, this month we need to hit X amount of clients or convert so many leads and so forth. Right. Once we've then got the monthly plan, you can then convert that into a weekly plan. Yeah, we could then break it down, and I think I might take on board what you've said yeah. about actually scheduling my day by yeah. putting things into a diary. I think that's a really good idea. I tend to be a bit more flexible with that. We might know that we want to do three blog posts on certain articles, and we're going to target X industry right, this yeah. particular week. Yeah, um, and then we'll do all our keywords and everything else all around that. Yeah, so we're not marketing experts, there's an awful lot we can learn from you in this regard. <laughs> but that essentially is how we work. So, so we have a plan, and it's really, really simple. It's basically just on an Excel spreadsheet. Yeah. So we know what what uh, markets we're, we're targeting for the next quarter. So it may be that we're going to um, target self-employed electricians, for example. So then we'll do all campaigns to do with self-employed electricians. And we'll say, right, well, in week one, we're going to do a mail shop. Week two, we're going to have a special landing page. And then week three, we're going to plug it through Twitter. And you find that they all sort of overlap a little bit. Yeah. But... And definitely think uh, cause I know <coughs> with Jules, she's um Jules is a uh, um she's under Dan from some success in Enfield. Okay. So like that where you've got a month uh, a monthly event. Yeah. So there'll be a certain day each month that she'll have a Dan from event. Okay. Um so my idea is as soon as you plan in Jules at like end the next one, you've got a a sort of four weekly process mm. to your next one comes up, you know, so that yeah. you know, week one you do got to do this, week two and then you know, That's what we do with events thing. as well. Yeah. yeah. So when we have um, an event going, we know what this is the date of the event, and we work back from there. Yeah. What do we need to be doing two days before the event to remind people? Yeah. What do we need to do a week before? What do we need to buy in two weeks before the as event? As you with this, you know, this um, Movan Inspire event is September the 16th, but we've, we're we doing parts of the planning now. Yeah. So that's how far ahead we've got because yeah. we know it's not something, you know, we've sort of about 300 people coming, it's not something we can do at the last exactly, minute. Exactly, yeah, it's sort of bigger than the event. It's not like a planning. networking event, you know, no, no. send an invite next week, you yeah. know, so um, there's a lot of stuff. So that's it. So, so it's interesting, so how do we change the process depending on the outcome? Um, and I think with, with that part is, is if depending on the outcome, because the outcome might change as well mm. um, at some point. What I'll do is, is is it's very particular is is what energy needs to be done to that. So yeah. if it's um 
if it if it's a case of like so I tell where something changed with the outcome of me and it might help George in this. So um so two weeks ago I had a lot of um well about four weeks ago I did a lot of statistics on my site. And something that changed was a lot of the traffic was coming from outside what I call my fifty mile radius. Yeah. So outside what I call my physical radius. Mm -hmm. Because they couldn't get everything can't come to my workshop, you know, mm. can't come to my my VIP group, come to yeah. one to one. Everything was outside that physical radius, um, and that was going off in your head a little bit. And then, mm -hmm. and when the the magazine business taken off as it is, that was kind of constantly struggling. And then, so I knew that I always had it planned, but I had it planned like you were further ahead about having the online products. Yeah. But then it was triggering me like I've actually this has changed his outcome because I need to do it now. Mm. I can't wait six months like I wanted to. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm going to miss out on all these people that visit my site and got nothing nowhere to go. Yeah. As such. Um. So I I took a day out. I literally had um, rescheduled one of my clients. Um. I said right and said to my wife and she knew what was going on in me that I was thinking it. I said I'm just going to go out and I went on a golf course. I'm going to mm. go on my own on a golf course and figure it out. Yeah. And just figure out the strategy because all my where I'm sending people, what my what am I marketing, what yeah. am I doing? This is where this show was born from, by the way, was that oh, golf okay. course. So right. it's kind of that was one of the strategies that come up with the day. Business expensive. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah. So, so, <laughs> so um so that outcome <clears throat> changed, but so I just put myself in that goal that, mm. you know, to go and think about it. and sometimes it's it's that, you know, at a time I thought it's a really busy week, I can't really spare that time. Mm. It wasn't in my original plan. Yeah. And the Monday I just changed it quickly and said that I need to achieve. Um and I was really honest with my client. I had to reschedule, so no, mm. you know, I just rung her up, told the situation. She was quite happy. Yeah, yeah. It actually suited her actually that we changed the, the thing. Yeah. So um, that's quite cool. So I mean, as the outcome changes, George, is your urgency's got to change with something, yeah. and you've got to reprioritize some things that were urgent. Mm. Their priority can change. You yeah. might, when you've done them, you think, right, well, I've got to do that. That's the most important thing. Mm. But then if something else comes up and your outcome needs to change, yeah. then your priority list will change completely in line with that. Um, I remember that business isn't stagnant, that business is like a living thing, it evolves anyway. Yeah. So like, like I said with the example, if we, if we were targeting electricians and we found that something wasn't working, we're not going to keep on doing it. So the, the important thing with marketing is mm. literally, you know, not measure, 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 <laughs> that, always yeah, measure everything. Measure, yeah. And split test things. So if you're going to yeah. have, you know, two different landing pages on a website, measure them or two different Google yeah, AdWords, absolutely. whatever. Yeah. See which ones get the most hits tweak it and make one better and better and better. But yeah, if you find that something's not working, don't keep throwing money and time at it. Move no, on to something that is yeah. working. One of the things about doing user template specific questions, brainstorm technique. So so not really. You've actually answered the own question, George, about it's about the outcome. Mm. And we touched on that. Um, and pretty much the technology now for me it's Google Calendar. Oh right, yeah. So it's everything so that I've got it on my phone. Yeah. I've got it on that I've got it everywhere, you know. Mm. Um, and people can tap into it if they need to do, you know, so that's not an issue. Um, so that's it. In terms of brainstorm techniques, I tell you one thing they do is the do you work, and even if you're not got staff and you're joint venturing with people, because I think you know working with with people now, but um, even when you're joint venturing with people before, mm -hmm. it's having that allowing that time we can get together just to beef out where we're at. So yeah. what we do is now we we meet Brittany and Zelmo every Monday morning. We we have a staff meeting Monday morning. You know, so what yeah. we've done is we've now blocked out our diaries. Yeah. Because that's important. That needs to happen. Yeah. So that would what I say about brainstorm sessions. <clears throat> give you that time. We don't know specifically. We we've got some things we know we're going to cover in that conversation, but mm. it does go for a bit of a tangent. Yeah. But what we do know is that we've set aside that time. That's it. Yeah. That's to when have exactly. that thing. So it's that bit of um. Thing. And like today, where we didn't, we normally do two hours, two and a half hours. Today we need to do end it by ten o'clock. Mm -hmm. So we just said, well, we you know we're doing it. We're yeah. still going to do it, but we're going to end it at ten o'clock. Yeah. So, um, so again, the outcome changed, yeah. but we're just seeing. So, it's really important to just give yourself that time to kind of sit back and just think about it and so answer the questions rather than having any brainstorming techniques or such. It's just really go yeah. like, where do I want to go to? What's really important? That's it. Yeah. And yeah. Um, oh. especially if you're if you're on your own, you know, then and that's, you know, I suppose why it's great having mentors and stuff like that. But you can just there will yeah. be someone that you. Especially with Jules, if you, with damsels, there'd be another jam, damsel maybe you can sort of join up with and make each other help each other be accountable. You know, yeah. so you say, look, you know, it's all right if we just have block out 10 minutes or half an hour, you know, once a week and just hold each other accountable. Yeah, you know? yeah exactly. And, yeah. and if you pick someone that's in a similar situation yourself, then you'll find it'll be a big win win. Yeah. So that's the technique I would use you for Jules. So just get someone that you, that you know and trust 
where you can actually say to each other as well, hang on, <laughs> you know, <laughs> is that really a priority, you know? Yeah, and that's right. Someone's yeah. going to challenge you, but also... But someone who's honest, just, they have, yeah. yeah, not someone who's just going to tell you what you want to hear. Yeah. yeah, and it can't just be a half now, you just have a nice chat and that's talk it. about EastEnders or whatever, you know, then yeah. you know it's now, you've got to think, like, it's a business half an hour, and stick to it. this is it, it's almost like an accountability session, I think that's you should get that. One of the things I like doing for brainstorming, yeah. if you've got ideas flooding around in your head, um, I love mind maps. Right. Cool. So I don't know if you ever looked at um, any of Tony Buzan's books about mind mapping. Yeah. Brilliant. But um, one thing, if you're stuck for ideas and you sort of in that is it like writer's block or whatever, when Quite you can't block, think yeah. of what it is, draw your little mind map and then draw a couple of branches off that are completely blank. And do you know what? It'll come to you. Something will pop into your head. So if you're thinking, right, I want to target a specific industry or I've got an event coming, draw an yeah. extra couple of branches and you'll be amazed how quickly you fill it in. That's, That's really good for brainstorming. Good. And of course, you can do that as a group as well. Yeah. And what this, I'll just edit that bit and I'll, and I'll use that as one of my own bits. Yeah, later. I'm sure you would. <laughs> <laughs> Copyright on it. Yeah, sorry, yeah. Oh, another little um, <laughs> sorry, going off on a tangent. Uh, something else that I, all my best ideas come to me as I'm dropping off to sleep. So, yeah, mine are in the bath. In the bath? There yeah. You go. So, so keep a notepad or something. Maybe it yeah. won't work in the bath. But no. I've dropped the phone in the bath, actually. Have you? Yeah. yeah. At times, I've got like a little notepad at the side of my bed or you know, your mobile phone. Just draw it down in Evernote. Otherwise, you sit there and it goes through your mind. You can't sleep. Yeah. Just get it down or somewhere. Bring it up at your next meeting. And that's your point done. You can just forget about it knowing it's not going to be. Yeah. That's you know, that brilliant marketing ID you've had is still there. Well, I think she has got in her head a little bit, actually. So, uh, how yeah. about answers, Jules? Um, now this one about about taking action, I think that's with everything. If you commit, it's like it's it, that is just a commitment thing, really. Where if if you put it into your calendar, so you put it into your <coughs> your diary. Yeah. Light going. Until we're live. So <laughs> there we go. The um, you put it into your calendar. It's about you know looking in my calendar. Yeah. So I can put it into my calendar, but the cannabis kind of for me then is then right so I look at that mm. you know or I have set little alarms or whatever like that but yeah. for me it's a, then the cannabis kind of just making sure once an hour as soon as I I give myself like sort of like so when we're clients today so like 15 minute either side mm. so I'll make sure I look in it and see what's you know so I'm always ahead of myself during the day yeah so I think that's the commitment and the making sure that you you follow it through it just has some set things which trigger that you're doing it rather than you know, planning all that and then getting to them where you say, oh yeah, I was going to do that yeah. and that and that. It's then look at it on a, either an hour basis or a daily mm. basis. And I always say about the, um, if you look at big businesses, mm -hmm. they look at their figures daily, yeah. hourly. I mean, when I was working with this sort of, um, you know, with 11 million pound business and I was looking at the figures on an hourly basis, that someone's job was to come and give me a whole pile of paperwork. Yeah. She couldn't even feel guilty because I didn't even look at the first four pages. <laughs> but they were so they paid the job, I suppose. But the, you know, so we looked at them hourly and I think yeah. the clue is there that the big big, big business are That's right, yeah. big on the polls, you know, yeah. they do know what's going on. Yeah. Um, I had amazing experience, as you look at the time, but we amazing experience with um, Sustaining Calms in his office. Do you know Sustaining Calms? Is he? Oh, he started yes, Dixon, yeah, yeah. Started and in his office, and he had a, a screen, <coughs> and it just had numbers going around on the screen. Mm -hmm. And it was quite early in the day, actually, but he had these numbers going through, and it was going, and I was quite fascinated by this, what were these numbers. Yeah. And it was how much money the whole business has taken that right. day. Wow. And I figured even in his position, yeah. you know, with all you know, the American business and everything going yeah. on, um, that he was still kind of wanting to know how much money wow. on the second yeah. that he had taken, and he still had reports coming to him as daily as well. And um, but I think that's a clue that if you keep your finger on the pulse, just make sure mm. if you want to really actually it through, is just have a set thing where you think right every hour or yeah. every couple of hours, you you know you look at that diary to make sure that you're you're following through. Stuff. Yeah. So um, so there you can you can do the best business plan marketing plan, but if you never look at it again, that's fine. <laughs> no, no point. Be, uh, yeah, and a lot of businesses say, have you got a master plan? They go, yeah, I did one once. Yeah, that's I'll right. Try yeah, I'll try and find something. it for you. I said, well, it's pointless now. <laughs> <laughs> Ridiculous. Um, cool, <clears> so <throat> we crack on. We've got, um, so Jules asked another one then, so, and she put also, just because I'm on a roll now, um, <laughs> could you explain why planning is so important? I do know, but it would still be good to hear other perspectives and give it more weight so it becomes a must. How often do you plan? Is it daily, weekly, or something else exercise? Well, we talked about a little bit yeah. about how much we do it. Um, what I would say, it's so important if, and I, and I put it in simple terms, and Jules will get it, because she knows that it's sort of kind of little energies, but if you, if you want to drive somewhere, and if I want to come to your office, but I, I don't know where it is, mm. um, I'm not just going to get in the car and yeah, just drive and yeah. just go off. 
you know, I'm going to look at a map, I'm going to look at Google Maps, That's it. Um, I'm going to have some idea, or, you know, I might even know roughly where it is, but I'm still going to look on Google Maps to have a look, yeah. to see what direction I'm going in. Yeah. Um, and it's just, you know, and for me, planning your business is as simple as that. Mm. If you don't know where you want to be in six months' time, where you want to be in a year's time, That's I mean, right. Georgia, know I'm very much keen about putting targets in for the next 12 months, people, because mm-hmm. it makes you do it now. Yeah. So you might have, and I, you know, you said that you put a lot of me, you've got like five year plans, 10 year plans, all these plans for the business. But you break that down, you still know what you want to do in the next 12 months. You yeah. still want to know what you want to do in the next month, that's you right, know, yeah. or the next week. Exactly. Um, and that's why it is important mm. because if you don't know, you just, you're going to go off aimlessly and yeah. I think you just think, oh, I never got round to that, oh, I never got round to that. No. And it's always, oh, well, next time I'll be a millionaire. So yeah, well, well the phrase that I love is if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. <laughs> and you, go the wrong way you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So you've got to have some kind of plan in place. And it doesn't have to be a really, really good plan. It just has to be a little bit better than everyone else's plan. And you just have to action it. Um, that's, that's really what sets apart massively successful business owners from those who don't do it. Lots of people have the plans, but they never actually get around to implementing it. But if you actually do that and you follow through on it, then you'll just your business will take off. Yeah. And we talk about being adaptable as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, if it changes, yeah. then being adaptable. Yeah, precisely because what you plan for two years' time, what you put in your business plan or your marketing plan now, if you really stick to it, you might find that in six months' time you've just smashed that target. Yeah. So you need to re- reset it for make it more realistic. Yeah. So don't be too rigid with your plan. Be flexible and adapt according to how well it goes. Cool. So I hope that answers your questions, George. Remember, anyone that asks questions or you want, you feel like you've got something that you want to ask them. By all means, you know, drop me a message and um, or connect with me on Facebook. And go to the Facebook group. So if you're watching this, you're not part of our group. Actually, we've got the group. Paul, you're part of it, aren't you? So we've yeah, got the I group. Yeah. It's, if you put in search "marketing help for small business owners," then you'll see the Facebook group. And um, just request to join. And I'll add you. And you can connect with me as well. And then you can ask any questions. But also, you get the daily Periscope videos that I do on there as well. Which so really day, good. Thank you. So <laughs> each day, we do ask a. <clears throat> a random question that's been asked through on Twitter, and then um, and do a little short periscope video, and, on, yeah. and it's all fed onto there. So um, I had some good feedback from the group, so I'm quite pleased I've done it actually. Excellent. It's good space. But this, um, so we've got one question here. We've, we've both, okay. When we saw the questions before we started, we both liked this. One. Good question. Yeah. Um, although Jermaine's and George, your questions were fantastic. So thank you for those. So Gillian asked, if you only had, or if you had only a hundred pounds to spend on marketing to make or break your business, what would you spend it on? I think that's a mm, great question. Because there's probably a lot of people, yeah. small budgets, thinking, like, where do I spend my money? Mm. They're probably going to spend it on business cards and <laughs> yeah. buy too many. Okay. Whatever. Um, so, £100, Paul. Well, I suppose it depends on what business you're in. Um, yeah. So, if I, if I use my business, because it's one that I've, you know, yeah. I know a bit about. Okay, if I had £100, I know for a fact that my website is going to sell things. So, the first thing I would do, which won't cost me a penny, I will create a landing page. On that landing page, I'll create some kind of content. It'll be like a downloadable e-guide or a series of e-lessons, something like that. I then need to let people know about it. So I would apply for a £75 coupon, or $75 (laughs) coupon, whatever it is, from Google Google AdWords. (laughs) Spend about £50 on Google AdWords, plus the £75 to get £125 worth of advertising. I'd split test it, pay £25 on one, £25 on the other, see which, which advert's working the best, drive some traffic to the website, that's then going to feed into my CRM, my customer relationship management system. So hopefully I'll pick up some leads out of that. Once I've got those leads, I can start drip feeding information. So let's say it's an E, an e series, you know, yeah. 10 ways to boost your business profit, something like that. So you get less than one on day one, less than two on day two. By less than three, I might say, here's a free guide. Um, I already have your name and your email address. Yeah. Please give us your phone number to get this free guide. So I've then captured a little bit more information. There is a technical word for that type of marketing, but can't think what it is well, now. yeah, I mean, it's the um, <coughs> relationship marketing because you're giving value. That's it. Yeah. And you're giving, giving, and, and I do a lot of that, obviously, giving value. Um, for me, the big thing as well, because a lot of people sort of do that when they give value, mm-hmm. um, but they, they then still don't ask for the sale. Right. Now, and, you know, and I give a lot of content out there, and I don't mind giving mm. content because the difference between content and context is completely different. So I'm quite happy. I can't sit down with 10,000 people. Yeah. If you go and take some of my content and go and make your business a million, but I'm happy as funny in the world. Yeah. Um, but by getting giving out that great content, then I get, like yeah. you say, to get nurtured in relationships. 
but you still got asked for that sale at some point or get them True. onto your product profile at some point. Mm. What you should do, if, if you've given great content out like you have, then you've earned the right to say, well, if you want to work with me, this is what you do. Yeah. You don't hard sell them. You say, okay. well, you know, you're an adult and, and, and I've got that phrase actually, okay, and I'll leave you with the phrase because I love yeah. that phrase. It says, you're an adult. So if you, you know, you made a decision. Yeah. So a lot of my things, are, um, you go through my presentations that I do a lot once, there's always three options. And one yeah. of the options is, you know, go and do something with the content mm. and that's it and that's fine. And if you've got any questions still, you can still ask me. Yeah. Um, but then if you want to work with me, there's this option or that option. Yeah. And you earn the, you earn the right mm. to do that. And you don't need to do it in a hard sell way. No. Uh, but a lot of people forget to do that, you know, they sort of go, oh, I have to still give value, give value, give value. Yeah, yeah. And you do, but you give value, give value, and then, you know, give some more value, and then you go, right, now, if you want to work with me, this is how you work with yeah. me, you know. Yeah. Um, if not, that's fine, I'm still going to give you value, value, yeah. but I'm going to ask you every so often, you decide when you want yeah. to get on the train, you know, or whatever. Yeah, so, um, which is essentially, well, right. yeah, so, so you would do I would, I would then campaign. hope, probably, but yeah. I wouldn't spend all my money on that, I would no. spend some of it, because all the social media stuff is free, yeah. So I can I can plug that landing page that I've created, and I'll probably do two landing pages to see which one works best. Because again, it doesn't cost me anything to do that. Yeah. The Google AdWords is the only thing I'm paying for, but then organically, I would hope to rank in some searches for that particular search term. Yeah. And then plug it through Facebook, Twitter, um, Google Plus, LinkedIn, all those resources to actually plug the landing page and and the free e guide. By the time it gets to lesson seven or eight. That's when I'd be going in saying, yeah. would you like a free demonstration of our system and how it works? By then, hopefully, I'll have captured not only their name, their email address, their phone number, their physical address. Yeah. I will also be able to see from all my analytics how many people have actually clicked on those, how yeah, many have opened engaged them. With you, yeah. yeah, so the ones who have unsubscribed by that point, I know they're not really a serious tender. Yeah. Those who are opening the content and reading it straight away, I might think, okay, these are worth, say, a direct mail campaign. But I might be down to just a handful of people at this point. That and 25 the, quid. <laughs> yeah, and I've got 25 quid, and then I invite them in, and I've got probably got five pound change to buy some tea and biscuits for them to come in and have, have, have a chat. So that's that, I think that's probably how I spend my hundred pound these that's days. Fun. Had you asked me this 12 years ago, I'd go yellow pages. <laughs> now, yeah, forget it. Well, just change. Yeah. <laughs> right. So for me, yeah, I'll, I'll take a different tax actually. My okay. Right. So if I had a hundred pound, bearing in mind you are the marketing expert, <laughs> I'm not. So but this it should also be really good. <laughs> depends on your industry that you're in as well. Yeah. It would work for your industry as, as much as mine is, and um, I think. I attract a lot of people that are in the service industry, obviously, as well. So a lot of people will get this in coaching and stuff like that. But even I think you can think out of the box whatever industry you're in. So even if you, even if you sell products, for me, the hundred pound is, is I would put on an event. Okay. Right. Yeah. So I'd spend that hundred pound <coughs> on a room, so that I can put on a free event for people, mm -hmm. and then to showcase what it's about. So something that would give like would give a value. Mm. I would do it in Facebook because I think if I'm going to spend hundred quid, I think anyway, if I can get one client. Then and I'll get 300 quid from one client or 500 quid. Over then mm. I've got my 100 pound back, and I can use another 100 pound yeah. to get the next one, and you know, yeah. and blah blah blah. So I would put on an event because for me that's where I get the the personal connection with people. Yes, yeah. okay. And I think and people can see is that want now. You know, most of the events that I do is where I pick up my my one to one clients from. Um, and even ones where I'm not expecting to. So that big business event that you sponsored mm. last year, you know, I had three one-to-one -one clients in, before the second break of that one. Yeah. You know, and I did. That wasn't the point. The point was actually raising money for charity. But um, mm. so that was a nice sidekick. Right. But it just shows you. But by standing up there and giving great content, and if it's products, then showing people what your products do. Mm. Um, so it doesn't matter if it's service or it's a product, whatever it is. And showing people hands on, they'll buy into you a little bit. Yeah. And then as long as you give again people the options. I mean, what I did, even though it's a charity, I gave people an option to come to a different workshop. Okay. If they wanted a more serious one, didn't I? The yeah. five steps of selling one. Mm. And and I did put it out there if anyone wants to work one to one, and then come and approach me separately. Mm. So I usually even I gave them the options. I didn't do a yeah. hard sell, but okay. they did give them the options. So I would put, yeah. I would spend my money on a on a room, yeah. and food and drink. Good. Get free because then, as you say, you can use social media. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. To um, get people to the event. Yeah. Um, I would ask a few people that I know. So if it was, if I knew your ideal clients was something, you know, your client base was would, mm. would get value from it. Mm -hmm. I might go for say, look, Paul, if you do this favour, you know, do you fancy coming to this? And maybe yeah. I'll we'll, we'll say that you sponsored the, the event or something yeah, like that. You good. know, so it gives Paul some good. So I would, I would get a few people around me that I think 
Well, you know, if I give you, if I'm booking a room, there's going to be some space there for a table and a stand. Mm. So you have a free stand, and you know I've done this before with yeah. people. So you, you have a free stand, um, but can you invite people as well along yeah. for it and stuff like that? You know, That's good. and get as many people in that room as you can. Mm. But you know what? Because even if only three people turn up, I would still give the same content, the same value. Yeah. Because I know actually the connection would be even stronger. Of course it would. So yeah. It doesn't need yeah. to be a hundred people to turn up for me to get one client. No. And my theory is, if I get one client from it, I'll go and use that money and do it again. Yeah. Um. So if I had a hundred pounds to break or make me, mm. that's what I would do. And there you go, Jim. And, um, and this is why Scott is the marketing <laughs> guru, and I'm not. So. Well, no, but I think <laughs> your one, I'll, you know, that would be, you know, your next one, obviously, because then yeah. you can service it. But um, but still, merge the two. Forget the ad, forget giving the money to AdWords. Do your landing page for the event yeah. with a nice little video on there. Or even plug it through social media and everything else. Get someone to sponsor you that's got a training room that can hold the event even through. Even better. Yeah. Offices. yeah, that's and, it. Yeah. <laughs> I know what I'd do it. They speak give me a shout, we'll do a joint venture. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I think but even if you're it's a really good question though, because hundred pounds, because I think people I think people that is actually a lot of people in that situation now. I think you're right. I've only yeah. got this amount of money. Yeah. And they're getting pulled, this would great, you know, actually mm. what I wouldn't spend it on and and this is gonna sound really dark because I do a lot of courses and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't spend it going on a on a course. No. Okay. Right. Because when you come out of a course, and I'll say this, even my courses you come out of, you're going to have to go and take action afterwards. Mm. So what I necessarily say, you know, it, it depends where your knowledge is, but if you need, if you're saying you're £100 your last money to make or break your business, we're going to assume that you've got some knowledge already, Julian, in your business, and you know mm. what you're talking about. Um, so then it's just about getting getting you in front of people. Mm. Um, and what I say is you're down to, and you're £100, and even if now you're thinking, right, okay, I've got £100, I'm going to spend all my money, I might do a bit of poor, I might do a bit of Scott said, but at the end of the day, what you have got to do is get, whether it's a product or a service, you've got to get one-to-one -one with people. Yeah. You've got to get to that thing where you can say, this is what I offer. Mm. Do you want to work with me, yes or no? Yeah, true. Without being hard salesy. Yeah. Um, and, and so don't just think, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do an event, I'm going to do some great content, everyone's going to go from me, then everyone's going to ring me up tomorrow yeah. and go, fantastic, I want to work <laughs> with you. Or I saw you add, you know, I want to work, you know, yeah. I want to come and do my accounts. You, it's, you've got to follow it up. Yeah. So I'll tell you, right, so this is going to spend my £100, but this is what I'm going to do to generate this amount of leads for my £100. Mm. This is how I'm going to follow up. And I actually might go back to Jules' question about planning the follow-up sequence. Then. Yeah. So when I do an event, there's a specific follow-up to it as well. So I plan, there's a thank you the next oh, day. Yeah. It's a week later, you know, did you, you know, it might be um, a few days later saying that, that this course I offered on the mm. day, this is this amount of space is free. Yeah. You know, did you have any questions and stuff or any feedback yeah. on it? And then a week later, so you still have a, a structured follow up with it. Yeah, I see. Um, and then you can use Mailchimp or something like that, which is free anyway. Yeah, know, of course. Yeah. So there's lots of um, there's lots of options out there. Mm. So hopefully that answers your question. Yeah, it's a good question. Although, eh? but really yeah, good because I think thinking. a lot of people in that boat. Yeah. yeah so um, that's a really good one. So thank you for Julian. Thank you, Jules, and thank you, Jermaine, for asking the questions. Before we go, I really want to give Paul the opportunity to talk about um, this charity event you're doing because it's a oh, right. great call. So just okay. tell us a, surely a little bit about it, what you're doing. Okay, yeah. Um, We've raised some money already, haven't you? It makes quite a bit well, of money. Yeah, we raised um, £1,400 That's uh, amazing. on mon last Monday evening. We did a, a yeah. Wimbledon networking event in our office. So basically it was uh, strawberries event. and cream. Yeah, it was, an, it was an event. We laid on strawberries and cream, pims and lemonade. Uh, local business owners such as Scott um, yeah. very kindly auctioned off um, their services and prizes and other local business people yeah. came along and bid on it, and I say we raised one thousand, just over one thousand four hundred pounds. So that was yeah. incredible. Uh, in September, I'm cycling from London to Amsterdam. Uh, we're doing it on behalf of Bowel Cancer UK. So every year, as a company, we choose a charity. Uh, last year, our charity was Action Medical Research, and I cycled from London to Paris. So a bit of a cycling yeah. theme going on here. <laughs> yeah. But this year, it's four countries in four days. So you we'll cycle through the UK, then France, then Belgium, then Holland. Um, yeah. Really looking forward to the event. The event is all paid for. Uh, basically, anything we raise, like, all the money goes to bowel cancer. So if, you, if you're interested in sponsoring me, I'd be very, very grateful. Um, you can do it via a, a Just Giving link. Uh, get in touch with Scott or myself, yeah. and we'll, we'll gladly send you the, the link to the Just Giving page. But yeah, um, really appreciate the opportunity to speak about that. It's a, yeah, it's no, a fantastic cause, um, so. calls and uh, yeah, yeah. Hopefully, we can do our little bit to help raise a bit of money for it. Yeah. And even got me at my house in the evening, which I don't like to do. So. Um, <laughs> There you go. So thank you for watching. Um, so this is episode two. If you want episode one, that'll be below somewhere where you can click on that, where we talked all about Twitter. Um, but we'll put again. I'll magically. 
<laughs> Brilliant. Paul C. We'll put your we'll put your Twitter handle on there as well. Yeah, what is your okay. Twitter handle, Ted? Um, Ac Abacus. So A C C Abacus. Okay, so that will yeah. magically appear. And Thank remember you. to follow me on uh, um, at Ask Scott C and ask any questions you want. We'll cover them in the weekly show, but also on the daily periscope ones. So thank you, Paul. I really you, appreciate Scott. it. Really appreciate the opportunity. And thank you. you guys. Thanks very much. Take care. It's a wrap. <laughs>